today we're going to get downright villainous. <laughs> That's a little weird, isn't it? But today we're going to be talking about my absolute favorite part of writing. And that's essentially creating a compelling villain, a villain that is worthy of its own fan club. Fans, of course, that may be a little bit fucked up, but that's part of the appeal. And it's probably easier than you think it's going to be. And no, it's not actually just because humans in general are kind of infinitely corruptible and, and messed up, although that does help a little bit. It's because the motivations of what our characters do when we're writing are interesting, not just to your audience, but to yourself as the writer. And that when those motivations lead to something truly heinous and, and horrific, even more intriguing. How can someone go to such lengths? How can someone convince themselves that what they're doing is right? And that's kind of the crux of this. So let's get into five tips that you can use to craft the most compelling villain you can. A quick note here, we're talking about the star of your villainous cadre here, not the throwaway henchman, not the red herring, not the overbearing, insanely powerful dark lord who never speaks and only destroys. We're talking about the villain that will sit with your audience for years and years and make them very uncomfortable about just how much they relate to them. Tip number one, motivation and goals. The first and perhaps most obvious way to make a compelling villain is to give them clear and believable motivations. I want to stress that final part here, believable. Understand why they are doing what they do, even if their actions are morally questionable and make sure it makes sense to you as the author. It's an overly simple way to look at it, but consider the phrase, the end justifies the means. What's something that you can personally think of that would warrant some trade-off? What would you do to save the love of your life? What would you do to put an end to an oppressive regime? But go beyond that. What if you were convinced there was only one way to get the desired outcome? What if the only way to save your loved one was to do something truly terrible? There's a quote from Rene Rocco that gets thrown around a lot from the morally gray characters so many of us enjoy reading about, and it can be modified for a compelling villain. A hero will sacrifice the person they love to save the world, but a villain will sacrifice the world to save the person they love. This works great for a villain who has a noble purpose that they are trying to accomplish through ignoble means. What it leaves out is the rest of the recipe that goes into it. Trauma, greed, empathy, or lack thereof. Anger, frustration, where and how do these emotions come in? Where and how do these emotions come in to the motivations? How do they convince the villain that they are doing is justified? I would suggest that it helps to imagine that every villain has in some way to at least themselves justified their own actions. They have maybe even like acknowledged that what they're doing is not necessarily good or right, but they have been able to justify the means to do it because of some overarching theme, something that they feel warrants what they are doing. They have to do this because in order to do something like this, you have to at some level, at some human level, be okay with what you are doing. Maybe you have grief, maybe you have remorse or, th or things like that, but it is still something that you have decided within yourself as the villain that this is something that you just have to do. The idea that a villain is just villainous for the sake of villainy is really fucking boring. So this is a, a way to kind of in your own head conceptualize why is a villain willing to do this? What has caused it? What motivations? What, what has led to this? What is the end goal that they're trying to reach so fucking desperately that they're willing to do such terrible things? Develop the goals of your villains and the motivations that are rooted within them. This adds depth to your character and makes them more relatable, or at least, at the very least, understandable. Number two is going to be complexity and depth, and it goes hand in hand with point one. By setting up believable motivations tied to their goals, you're already well on your way to creating a complex villain with depth. 
Your villain or villains shouldn't be just window dressing to make your plucky little protagonist feel good about themselves. That is not their goal. That is not their purpose. If they are, quite frankly, they're kind of shit villains. Writing emulates life and no villain is one dimensional. They aren't crafted in a lab with ganglia that simply says murder. I guess unless that's what you're writing is like a specific like villain that is just like a murder machine. But then you'd at least have to think of why and how that that villain was created, right? There's always going to be something that comes back to it. Some kind of reasoning behind it. It could be, it could be power. It could be love. It could be feelings of injustice. There are always there is always some reason that pushes someone to do something that is awful. So how can you add this depth to your villains? Explore their past, their, their fears, their vulnerabilities, their wants, their desires. What makes them vulnerable? Do they have empathy or is there a lack of empathy? Where, when did they lose their empathy or did they never have it? If they never had it, how did they react to that? Feeling different from, from the rest of humanity when seeing that they are missing, essentially missing an essential piece of who they are. Think of like you know, a good example of this would be, and granted, you know, endings are bad and everything like that, but Dexter, the Dexter TV series that explored the a serial killer that could essentially be considered a villain and how they dealt with their lack of, well, empathy. <laughs> Maybe if I don't blink, my eyes will tear up. And how essentially they were just masking and feeling confused about how to go about it. But if they do feel empathy, how do they how do they struggle with how do they struggle with what they're doing? How do they justify it? How do they mask their pain? Do they do they seek alternate ways to to control it? Do they seek sources that will external sources to mask their pain? Those are all things that you can do to add to the depth and complexity of your villain. Consider giving your villain redeeming qualities, things that make them at least somewhat in some way a little bit likable. Give them moments of sympathy, moments of justice and and concern. A good villain can still be hated, but they should also feel human because humans are fucked up. We're not all heroes, though we may all still feel like we are the heroes of our own story. It's kind of a good way to think of your villain. How are they picturing themselves? For point three, we need to back up just a little bit and go back to the thought experiment. What would you do if faced with this kind of moral dilemma of what would you do to save a loved one? How far would you go? What harm would you be willing or unwilling to cause? Where is your line? Where could you imagine your line extending to? creating a moral dilemma for your audience where the question the extent to which they find themselves agreeing with the villain, asking themselves if they're justified or not. Be compelling as hell. This doesn't mean that your audience has to agree with your villain. It just means that they need to at least take that little bit of a moment to think, well, do I, what, what, do, what do I feel about this? How do I feel about what the villain is saying or doing? Make them sit there and dissect the motivations of your villain. And part of how you can do this is by having your villain have their own sort of moral code, just like your hero should, just a bit on the darker side, a bit of the more fucked up side, perhaps even a lot darker and crueler. Explore the gray areas of your character, showcasing that morality itself is not always black and white. There is not always a simple good and evil. There's a gray area in between. In fact, that might even carry into our fourth point. Number four is the relationship with the protagonist. We love our antagonist and our protagonist, don't we? We love how they interact and play off of each other, how they create tension with basically, essentially, the competing goals of going against each other. But what happens when it becomes less clear who is the hero and who is the villain? Your hero generally isn't going to be a spotless either. It's entirely possible to build a justification for your villain's actions through the failures, mistakes, and frailties of your protagonist. 
explore a deep and emotional connection between the villain and the protagonist. Perhaps it's from past interactions or those that occur throughout through your story. Maybe it's sincere ideological differences. When I think of my protagonist and antagonist, I think of it more like a tug of war. On each side you have extreme, extreme good and extreme bad. They pull each other toward the center, a morally gray wasteland. Sometimes one drifts towards one side, pulling the other with them and vice versa. Explore the parallels between the hero and the villain. This can create a more engaging and dynamic story, as you see where and how they play off of each other. The relationship between your protagonist and antagonist is very, very important, not just to making your hero, your protagonist, seem like a good person or something that is along the lines of someone that your, your, your readers want to root for, but also creating a villain that is compelling and interesting and makes people want to know more about that villain brings us to our fifth point and one that is my personal favorite point to, to making a villain compelling. And that's adding their perspective. I personally could not write without doing this, without providing the, the villain's perspective. I think it is one of the things that is one, of course, the most fun for me to write because you're exploring these, these deep, dark like calculations that the villain is making about why they have to do the things they do, why they are willing to, what sacrifices they're willing to make to reach that ultimate goal from the first point, to reach that the, the motivations that make them want to do this. Why do they feel they have to do this? And the simplest way to do this is, of course, the way that I write with third person limited. It makes it so you can obviously just pop into the hero. You can pop into the, the villain, which sounds a little weird in, in some kind of, but you know, you get what I mean. You can basically pop over to decide what they're talking, what they're, what they're thinking and feeling. Or, but it's not limited to that. There are ways to do it with every point of view. Let's say you're writing a first person point of view. Well, then you could very easily have your, your protagonist witness something, like secretly witness something that they're not supposed to see. You could have the villain monologue, but in a true and honest way. You could have the protagonist discover a, you know, something, some kind of, of note or diary of the villain. It's one of those things that there are myriads of ways to authentically show the villain's perspective. To show not the, the over the top or, or you know, scary side of the villain, but what they're actually thinking, what they're feeling, how their, their turmoil is resolved or unresolved. What, the, what they're going through, showing the perspective of the villain, perhaps as much as the, the protagonist can make them just as compelling or interesting or even more so to your reader. You need to show the villain without the, the kind of the unfiltered view of the villain, without the, the filter of the morals being placed upon them by the, the, the perspective of others. You need to show the villain through their perspective. Personally, I treat my villain with as much care and concern as I do my hero. I want, to, if I have done my job well, if I have succeeded in my aims, there will be someone somewhere willing to write a whole essay on how this character, this villain, is actually the hero, and the hero is the villain. That is my hope whenever I am writing, to make these characters feel so intensely dimensional, three-dimensional to, to people when they're reading it, that they can find ways to relate, to understand, and perhaps even cheer for the villain. If there's one thing to take away from all of this, it's to remember that a villain is not evil for the sake of being evil. They have their own reasons, their own motivations, and their own moral code. It is the complexities of your villains that make them as interesting as the protagonist. Try to understand your villain as you are writing them, and your audience will too. My name is Mark Moore. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate you. Now go write a villain that is going to be so well-rounded, so deep and, and complex that people will have an unhealthy obsession with them. Thank you so much.